Uh, this question is about the hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Uh, it's not permissible for somebody to sit on a table where alcohol is served. Does that mean uh, you're not allowed to be in a restaurant where alcohol is served? Or it's only not allowed for you to be at the bar, sitting at the bar where alcohol is served, but you can sit, for example, on tables, a uh, private table? Uh, what this hadith means exactly. Alhamdulillah, salatu salam ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa minu wa lahu ba'd. This hadith is a hadith reported by Tirmidhi and it's a sound hadith min hadith Jabir radiallahu an that the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said uh, is not allowed for uh, someone who believes in Allah and the Day of Judgment to be sitting in a place or in a, in a sitting where alcohol is uh, serve or around the table where alcohol is served. Um, so this hadith in particular is speaking about you being on a table or a place where alcohol is served around you. So uh, this is like if you are atten- sitting at the bar and the bar attendant is serving everybody and you're sitting there, uh, that will not be allowed. Or you're sitting in a table and this is a round table and there's people left and right uh, 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 drinking or al khamr is served at the table that hadith will include it. Or sometimes people go to restaurants and different customers like uh, be around the grill and uh, the food is cooked but also khamr is served so people uh, around you are uh, drinking. Uh, the, all these scenarios can be included in this uh, hadith. And the default rules that the person should avoid places where alcohol is served in general, even if it's not served particularly to your uh, table. But for those who are living in a non-Muslim country, in a, in a, especially in a Western country, um, uh, where uh, serving alcohol is a common thing in so many restaurants and so many places, even in coffee shops and stuff like that, uh, I do believe that the rules will be uh, specifically limited to the table that you are sitting at. So if your own table, there is no alcohol served in it, uh, you, not, should, you should not be included in that hadith or the prohibition of this hadith. But it's always better for the person to avoid places where alcohol is served in general because some places are uh, restaurant slash bar. A person should, not, uh, uh, should avoid that as much as they can, especially those who are role models and, and leaders in, in the Muslim community. Uh, especially if they do that in front of young or youth or uh, community members who can be misled by seeing them in such places. Uh, so all these are, are things that should be taken in consideration as we talk about the ruling and attending a place where alcohol is served. Um, uh, also, uh, another thing that I want to uh, say here, that uh, sometimes you will be in a place where you can just grab something from the bar. Like a lot of restaurants, when you make an order, you go pick the food from the bar. Um, that's fine, or you pay for it, but just don't sit on the bar, or don't be w- waiting there. And, and, and uh, even if you, you have to wait to collect your food or to sign the bill, that's fine. Uh, but the point is, is to enjoy yourself, and you just even if you're drinking non-alcoholic uh, uh, beverage, beverages, but you are there next to those who are like, you know, served alcohol, it's something you should avoid um, and not to be uh, there. Another scenario also is, is, is known is sometimes you're in places where you can um, be in a place like an al- alcohol is served in the place that you are in, even though you have your own space, let's say uh, in some uh, theaters or some, um, I'm not talking about the rural theater now, but next to you, somebody else who drinking or an airplane, you know, where you're sitting and next to you, somebody who is drinking. You're not responsible for that person because your own seat became like your own space and you're responsible for it uh, uh, specifically. Uh, so this is in, in regard to the issue of uh, being in a place where alcohol is served. Final point I want to say. Uh, sometimes uh, a person uh, can be in a situation where he will be sitting in an actual table, like a large table, and in this table, like in, in work, uh, uh, for work reasons, and alcohol is uh, served. Somebody order a beer or somebody order wine uh, on the t- uh, among the guests. And it is something that maybe you have to be in that place bec- due to work related uh, or because of 
uh, an event that organized by your own uh, business or work. Um, in this case, we say, generally speaking, we encourage people to avoid such gathering and social gathering, but sometimes I understand that these social gathering and these gatherings something that is important for the employee to be part of it and can be absent from all of them. Otherwise, it can actually affect his performance, his, his work. Uh, and remember, uh, being in that table is not forbidden for itself. It's forbidden because other reason. When you're sitting at a table or khamar as serve, that means you're close to it. That means that you might be passing the, the khamar to someone. That means you might, you know, fall into this. Because if you sit in a table the khamar as a serve, that means this your friends, this your bodies, this your people, the kind of people that you hang out with. And next thing you find yourself drinking like them. And, 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 and there is many stories I'm aware of, of people, you know, did not care much about these rules and they ended up actually trying it and saying friends influence and end up uh, uh, drinking from it. So it's not forbidden for itself, but through what it can lead to. So whenever the thing in Sharia are forbidden because of what's lead to, we're not allowed to do it unless there is a need or there is a great need for it or necessity, obviously. Uh, and he, uh, some people for their job or their work, they, they kind of, uh, put in a situation which is very, very uh, needed for them to be present in such gathering. So and those people are saying you limit the amount of participation to the minimum and making sure that you don't, you know, serve it yourself, you don't participate in that. Uh, and I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make it easy for uh, all of us and to forgive us and to keep us away from al-khamr. Uh, and, uh, and all this ahadith is to make us have this, you know, uh, natural rejection to al-khamr. And that's why it is important for us to, to learn that and to teach our kids this as well. And I will end up with this point. Uh, sometimes I found it's important for our kids to know that al-khamr is something bad. You know, don't teach your kids cheers and, you know, shots and all kind of, uh, you know, the language of al-khamr. That's not uh, right. Uh, uh, you should not teach your kids. You should teach your kids from the early age to avoid, to hate, to, to, to hate al-khamr and, and to, to basically feel that there is something uh, bad and something I should avoid. Audhu billah, astaghfirullah. Uh, and that's important. Part of this is not to make your kids or your children also very relaxed around al khamar on the environment where al khamar is served. Uh, may Allah protect us and our children. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam Muhammad. Subscribe to this channel, share this video, and click on the bell icon so that you can be notified with every new video at Faith IQ. Jazakallah khairan. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.